All right, we are going to look at replacing the fuel pump in the Nissan. We have a code of P0463, which is a high voltage reading from the fuel sending unit. Uh, my main symptom is that my fuel gauge doesn't work. Uh, it either gives me a weird reading, like I just filled up my tank, and, but yet I have a quarter, or sometimes uh, it won't show anything at all and it will, the fuel warning light will come on and the fuel indicator will be all the way down to E. Now, I already removed, or excuse me, I already lifted the back end of the Nissan, and uh, if you need to know how to do that, uh, there's a little card up here in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Go ahead and click that, and that will show you the proper lifting method for the Nissan. As far as actually removing the fuel pump, there's a lot of stuff that needs to get done. We actually need to drop the fuel tank. So uh, the first thing you wanna do is actually just open up your fuel filler cap and make sure there's no pressure in it. So uh, I assure you that is the easiest step and it only gets more difficult from here on out. Uh, next, we're gonna be removing the left rear tire and then we're gonna be removing the, uh, the guard underneath to get to the tank. Here we go. Once the tire is removed, uh, we actually need to empty all of the pressure from the fuel lines. We want to make sure that when we're removing fuel lines underneath the car, that uh, we're not spraying fuel everywhere. So you can actually do that uh, by just removing the fuse to the fuel pump and turning the motor over. That's actually the safest and easiest way to do it. So under the hood, access your fuse box. It's in the, right in front of the passenger seat inside the engine bay. And there's two clips. There's one um, on the engine side and one on the side of the fender. You just wanna push those in with your fingers and you can lift it right away. Now, the fuse in question is on the top row and uh, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the seventh fuse up from the bottom. Now, definitely check and make sure that it's the same in your car. I don't uh, really know why it would be different but on the inside of the cover, it will show you uh, a map to all of your fuses. So also on the inside fuse box in the car, you should have a fuse puller available to you uh, just inside that little fuse bay. So I have it here. I'm gonna pull the seventh fuse up and then we're gonna go turn over the car to uh, remove all the fuel from the lines. Done. Now let's go turn it over. The next step is to just turn the truck over, let it run, and then let it stall. Once it stalls, you wanna turn it over a few more times just to make sure that all the fuels are out of the line. All right, that was pretty quick. We're gonna turn it over a few more times just to make sure that everything's out. All right, I think we're good. Let's move on. At this point, if you have any fuel in your tank, I'd say more than a quarter of a tank, you're gonna wanna siphon it out. If you're dropping the tank, you're gonna wanna minimize how much weight is in it and how much fluid is sloshing around in there when you're trying to lower it. Uh, so you can either do an auto siphon or a bulb siphon, or there's a method where you can run the fuel pump to um, run out the tank. So uh, you'll have to investigate those on your own. I actually have just a little bit of fuel in my tank, um, so I'm actually not gonna be removing any fuel. The view that you're seeing is through the wheel well of the wheel that we removed. Now, before moving forward, we need to remove three different hoses from the uh, tank. The first is the f lower fuel filler hose, and that's you know the, this hose right here that you see. This goes up to the, the filler neck and uh, the filler cap where you put gas in. Then you have the evap hose, which you can't see from this angle, but I'll show you in a little bit. And then also the vent pipe quick connector, um, which goes into the fuel pump itself. So we need to remove those three things before we can uh, drop the tank. So I'm gonna start with the filler hose that you see here. And this is just a simple uh, hose clamp that you can just loosen and then remove the hose off of the, the uh, filler pipe. 
Now what I'm going to do, now that I've, I've broken this seal and you can kind of twist it freely, I'm just going to leave it like this because um, to actually remove it off of this filler neck, I would have to bend this pipe pretty aggressively and I really don't want to do that in case uh, you know I fracture any of this right here. So I'm going to leave this as is and then move on to the next two hoses. Next we are removing the vent pipe quick connector and the EVAP hose. For the vent pipe quick connector, there's two little clips on the outside uh, that meet the hard metal hose. You just want to push those in with your fingers and you should be able to remove the entire thing. There you go. Quick and easy on that one. So we'll just let that sit there. Just be extra careful on this. This looks like some pretty um, brittle plastic. I don't know if you can see that there. There you go. Um, but that's out and now the next one we have to remove um, looks like we may need a few tools to snap this out of place but we'll take a quick look here and get back okay so I went ahead and flipped the hose from the uh, one side of the fuel filler hose to the other and what you see is there's a little clip here it's kind of like a C clip that needs to get pushed out from the other end so we're gonna try that all right. Okay, well, um, remember how I said to be careful with these plastic pieces? Well, I was able to get the vent hose out, or excuse me, the EVAP hose, which is great, uh, except for I broke the clip. So, uh, we will deal with that challenge later. Once all the hoses are disconnected, we're ready to drop the actual tank. Now, some Nissans were um, equipped with a fuel tank guard. If you do have a fuel tank guard, you'll need to remove the four bolts that are um, holding that guard in place. I don't seem to have one. Um, I don't know if it was an off-road package or, or what the deal was, but um, I don't have one. So I'm gonna move right to actually removing the tank itself. Now, you wanna be really careful doing this, and the biggest thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you have a wider stance on your jack. Now, what I did is I took a ratchet strap and a piece of wood that I had, and I widened the stance of my jack. So, um, is it, you know, is it the optimal situation? Well, no, but it's better than just using the jack head itself, especially if you have a smaller jack. Uh, you may want to consider cutting a hole in a piece of wood and recessing it, or uh, just kind of getting creative and making sure that you're not just using this tiny little point that you're going to be balancing the fuel tank on, especially if you're going to try to do this yourself. So I widen the head of mine. I'm going to slide it in place. Once it's in place, there is three bolts holding in the tank itself. They're big bolts and uh, there's two straps. So three bolts, two straps doesn't make much sense, but on one side, uh, the, which would be the front of the tank, there is a bolt on one side and a clip in the other that slides into a groove. So um, we're going to support the tank make sure we're sort of comfortable with it, and then start removing the straps and see where we stand. Now the bolts that hold up the fuel tank are 17 millimeter. Um, I'm gonna use a uh, electric impact. If you don't have an electric impact, you'll probably need to use a breaker bar. So uh, just start removing them slowly as you can and uh, remove the uh, straps from the tank. All right, that's the front. Now we're gonna go remove the one bolt from the rear and we should be able to drop the tank. All right, now we're at the moment of truth here. Now all of the weight is on the jack itself and all straps have been removed. So we're ready to actually start lowering the jack and getting the tank out from underneath of the truck. Now. I cannot stress enough how important it is to just be slow, methodical, and careful here. If you see something going wrong as you're lowering the jack, stop lowering it. 
and figure out what's going on, figure out how you can get it better supported or uh, enlist the help of a friend if you have them around. Now, next, you'll notice that in the filler fuel hose that uh, I actually didn't remove that all the way. So as I'm lowering the tank, I need to make sure that hose releases correctly as I'm dropping the tank. So uh, wish me luck, here we go. All right, so I lowered it about an inch, inch and a half. Now I'm going to, uh, I don't have any swaying or anything weird like that, but I am gonna remove this hose because I believe I have enough slack now. Let me just do a little bit more. Okay. there. All right, everything's still looking good. All right, so the hose, the filler hose has been removed. And now it looks like the tank is actually um, tilting forward. So I want to be careful as I keep lowering to make sure that the tank doesn't actually tilt to one side. So I'm going to go a little bit further down. Okay. All right. So now it's tilting pretty severely. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, slide the jack underneath or the tank forward, one of the two. All right. I was able to slide the tank back so I can continue dropping. All right, now I'm feeling some tightness going on and I don't know what it is. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to investigate what's going on before I continue. In fact, I'm gonna raise the tank up a little bit further to make sure I'm not putting any tension on any hoses or any power. All right, so it would appear that there is a power connector that goes into the fuel pump um, unfortunately, I won't be able to get a camera back there, but that absolutely needs to be removed before dropping the tank. It appears that I'm pulling on it um, as, uh, as we drop the tank. So remove that before lowering the tank any further. All right, so I was able to get the electrical clip off of the, uh, off of the fuel pump. And so we're gonna continue to drop the tank. All right. I think, well, we appear to have something caught on the right now. So let's go take a look there. Now what we're gonna do, um, and in retrospect, and I can tell you now, which is nice, but for me it's kind of a pain. When you lift the back of the Nissan, lift it almost as high as you can, because um, the fuel tank now is, um, is too big. So it's actually too big to just drop this and pull it out. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do is slide the jack out from underneath of the tank um, while holding the tank. So unfortunate, but that's what I'm gonna have to do. Before you drop the tank all the way though, make sure that you take a look and make sure there's no um, obstructions, nothing holding it on anything we may have forgotten. Okay, wow. So the tank is out, it's on the floor. Um, uh, all I did was supported it with my left hand and slid the jack out from underneath with uh, my right hand. So what I need to do now is remove all this garbage off my jack and actually lift the Nissan even further uh, into the sky so I can get this tank out from underneath. Okay, so there it is, uh, the fuel tank in all of its glory. Now, a few things I wanna go over uh, now that it's out. 
uh, here's the here's the fuel sending unit. Inside the fuel sending unit is also the uh, fuel filter and also the fuel gauge. Now, when I said I needed to remove two additional things off the tank, now here's the three that we removed during the um, while, while the tank was still up. This here, the evap, the um, vent, and also the uh, fuel filler hose. Up here, you have the electrics to the pump, and it looks like some other um, some other vent or probably the fuel line that goes up to uh, up to the front of the truck, so to the motor. So this is out. Um, I actually don't have um, I don't have my replacement pump. I just wanted to make sure we could accomplish this tonight. Uh, make sure everything came out smoothly, and then uh, which it did not because I actually broke um, a clip in here, which we'll have to deal with. But um, it's all everything's out. Uh, it's good to go. You're going to need to get probably get a special tool um, for removing this this pump. Um, you could probably rent it. I haven't investigated it yet. Before tomorrow, I will and let you know um, whether or not we can rent a tool or if we need to buy it to get this uh, pump out. So that's it for the tonight. I'm gonna go uh, shower and have a beer. See you soon. Well, it's the next morning and I have a, a new fuel pump on order. So it should be here uh, in a few hours. But what I wanna do is uh, take this old pump out. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to talk about a few things. First of all, I removed this um, evap hose. It was the same C-clamp uh, that I broke earlier. Um, I removed that C-clamp. This one I actually did successfully, so it should look like this here. Uh, i got to figure out how to fix this later, but regardless, pull that clamp out. This should slide right off the tube. And so now we have just, just the pump to worry about. Now. This pump uses a lock ring, like many other fuel pumps, but you generally are gonna need a tool to get this off. Now, I really don't wanna go buy a tool that I'm gonna be using probably once. So, um, I'm actually gonna just use a screwdriver and uh, something to kind of just pad it a little bit, like a shop rag, and I'm just gonna kinda of hit this and take this lock ring out. So you basically want to just turn this uh, counterclockwise until it pops out and this ring should come off and then you'll be able to take the uh, fuel pump out of the tank. So before you do any of this, um, you're, you're gonna want to block any holes that have any gasoline fumes coming out of them. Uh, call me paranoid, but when I'm banging metal on metal, I want to avoid creating any spark that might, um, you know, light any gas fumes on fire. So uh, out of the filler neck, I put in, uh, just stuffed a rag into it. I'm gonna probably just tape this off and then just make sure I don't have any open fumes around when I'm, when I'm banging the metal on metal. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna start taking the ring off. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, start hitting. I have the uh, just a blunt screwdriver, just a flathead screwdriver, and I'm just going to rest it inside this groove like this here, kind of put it at an angle, and hit it to get this ring to move. Now, I'm going to just put an extra little layer of protection here, this little rag against it, um, just so it's not metal on metal. And then I also have a dead blow hammer that I'm going to use that will, um, you know, it won't reverb so much off of the screwdriver. If you don't have a dead blow, that's really not that big of a deal. Um, just something I like to use for this type of stuff. So let's get started. All right. So after a few good wallops here, this ring popped off and with it, the uh, pump popped off. So what you wanna do here is when you're taking this out, be extra, extra careful uh, to not get any grime into the tank. We're about to put a brand new pump in and we really don't want to start off by putting a bunch of uh, garbage in the tank that it's going to suck up. So uh, just carefully slide this out. All right.
Now there's fuel in the bottom. Find a hole, just kind of rotate it until it starts to drain out and let it drain. So we're gonna let this drain. Have some cardboard or something on standby that you can set this down on. Oops. All right, rotate a little bit more. Okay. That looks pretty good. So if we set it up vertically, yeah, there's a little bit more here. So now is the time to make sure that you clean this surface. Uh, underneath the O-ring, mine was pretty filthy, so I just took a shop rag, uh, wiped it all down, cleaned it up, wiped around the surrounding area, uh, taking extra care to make sure I don't drop anything into the tank itself. Um, again, you really don't want to do that because you, you're about to put a brand new filter in. Use your judgment on the O-ring. Um, my O-ring is fine, but my kit that I'm buying comes with a new O-ring. Not all of them do. So um, you're going to have to take a look and see if your kit does. If it doesn't, you know, you may want to consider getting a new O-ring or just, you know, thoroughly inspecting yours, making sure it's still supple and, and you know, a, what an O-ring should be. And I don't see any reason why you can't really reuse that. Um, if my kit did not come with an O-ring, to be honest, I would be comfortable using this one again. Uh, it looks perfectly fine. Secondly, if you are like me and you're going to be storing this for a uh, a few hours up to a day um, while the pump is out, just find something to cover it up. So I'm just going to take a bag and just put my O-ring uh, kind of gently back on like that. And so that way, um, you know, nothing is going to get into the tank while it's sitting. Um, once the tank, or excuse me, once the pump comes in, we're going to reassemble it and put it back on the truck. All right, so the pump is here. Uh, very excited. I went with a Spectra pump. The, um, I basically got it because it had good reviews online. Um, again, as I say in almost all of my videos, definitely shop around for these parts. Nissan wanted $450 for them, and uh, I paid $130 for these, or for this. So um, definitely saved a lot of money just by clicking around on the internet for a few minutes. This, uh, this is the full kit. This comes with the gasket. So all we have to do now is pop it into the tank and then get the tank back on the truck. Simple as that. Let's go. So we're ready to install the pump. Now before we do, uh, before we get started, we want to make sure of a few things. Now on my pump, when it came in the mail, the float was not installed. So I had to install the float. There's probably a few things you're going to have to do to your pump, um, depending on the brand, depending how it's packaged, how it's sent. Uh, but just follow the instructions that are in the box and get it ready for installation. Um, once it is ready for installation, you want to do a final check of your tank and make sure that you haven't dropped anything into it inadvertently. So I'm just going to take off my lock ring, set that aside. Pull this back and just take a quick look and make sure that there isn't anything in there. There's a, there's a few little bits of sediment, but um, nothing too crazy. So what that means is we are ready to drop the O-ring in, in place. This is my new one. Um, mine came with it. Here's my old one. Don't need that. Drop the O-ring in. Now the pump is going to sit uh, right on the floor of the tank. And you're going to have to put some pressure on it uh, to get it to seat correctly. So set my O-ring here, make sure it looks good. Drop it in. Now, here we go. Now on here, this was facing, the old pump was facing this way with the, with the tubes coming out. Um, this would be the back of the tank. So you want to make sure that you get it in the same way that it was in before. So make sure you're not hitting your float on anything. Angle it down. All right. 
and then just set it in place. All right, so now it's sitting on the bottom of the tank. So what we have to do is actually push down on it to get it to go into place. So um, before we do that, I'm just gonna double check a few things and then we'll actually seed it down into, the, into its slot here. All I wanted to check was when I'm dropping the actual pump in, is the, um, is the float hitting anything? And secondly, uh, the, the position of the pump is important, but really that takes care of itself with this tab here. This tab really only fits in one of the, uh, one of the empty slots between, um, between these lap ring supports. So uh, I think I'm ready to go. I'm just gonna push down, get my ring on, Get it over these things here. I had to take this cover off of the evap hose to get it on here. And then turn. All right, so the the lock ring is in position. What we have to do now is employ the same method we used to um, get the get the lock ring off. So we're going to tap it into place, but this time we're going to tap it in the clockwise direction as opposed to the counterclockwise, just to get this locked into place. All right, looks like we're popped on, so on to the next step. Now that everything's back in place, uh, we wanna start putting the hoses back on, and then we gotta get it back underneath the truck. But before we do that, once the lock ring is back in position, just take a quick look around, maybe grab a flashlight, and just peek around the outer edge of the actual pump, and make sure that you can see that O-ring that you put in. Now, if you don't see it, you may want to consider taking it um, back out and making sure that you can see the O-ring all the way around, make sure it's seated properly. Mine looks good. I don't see the O-ring, or excuse me, I do see the O-ring all the way around and it is uh, in its proper place. So, next we're gonna put the EVAP hose back on. That's this hose here. And uh, we want those clips back that we pulled out earlier, this one. Uh, the one that I broke on the other end, I was actually able to repair um, with some super glue and holding on really tight. So uh, we're gonna slide this back on. Put it on here, put the ring back in place, and then just rotate it back to the way it was. Perfect. Pop that in, there we go. So now, when we're ready to put everything back in, now remember your electrical and this vent over here, uh, or excuse me, the fuel line, is still underneath the car. We can't really pull that out and connect it before putting the tank back up, but we do uh, wanna put everything back in place that we can, so that when we do have it back on the jack and we're lifting it up, we can connect things as we go. So that's in place. Um, that's where they should be and all right next we're gonna get it on the jack and then get it back underneath the truck one more thing before putting the uh, tank back up into the truck this quick connect that goes onto the fuel line uh, this does not um, or this is not included with the new pump so you need to very carefully remove this and uh, make sure it's on the new pump before bringing the truck um, into the equation. Okay, as I think my video just demonstrated, uh, I had to 
slide the tank underneath the truck first because my jack stands are not tall enough. Uh, once the tank was underneath, I had to turn the tank on its side, slide the jack underneath, and then um, kind of roll the tank back onto the jack. But it looks like it's good now. Uh, and another kind of tip here is that the center, the center of gravity or the center of weight for the tank is closer to the rear of the tank than it is the front. So uh, just when you're trying to balance it, start about 60% of the way to the back of the tank um, and you'll have a little bit more luck there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start raising the tank, connect the fuel lines, the power, and then bring it all the way up and once it's all the way up, I'm going to get that other vent hose, the evap hose, and the fuel filler neck reattach to the tank. Um, then that's it. We're, and then we need to turn it back on and get fuel into it and make sure it runs. Now that the tank is up, uh, you can just about see uh, the fuel pump back there. This is the point where it's important that you don't strap the tank up and um, get it up against the car before putting all of the proper lines in. So again, you have your vent and your electric that need to be plugged in here. And remember, we already ran the EVAP post um, further down here towards the back of the tank, so that way um, it's already in place. So the fuel line, the electric, get those in, and then you can bring the tank all the way up, and we're gonna do the straps first before we even start messing with the uh, last three hoses to make sure that the tank is secure. All right, now it is absolutely critical at this point that you make sure that this tank does not fall off of this jack under any circumstance, because now we have electric and the fuel line hooked up to the fuel pump. So if this falls, it will rip those right out of the top of the pump or rip them out of the car. Something not good will definitely happen. So what we need to do is get this all the way up into place now where it's gonna sit. And I've set the straps in at, you know, right below where they're gonna go. So when I get under there and I get the, the, the uh, tank in place, I can just quickly get the straps in and make sure it's, um, everything's secure before moving forward. All right, so I have the rear supported. We're gonna move, or excuse me, the front supported. And then we're gonna move to the rear, get that supported, and then uh, reconnect the rest of the hoses. All right, all that's left to do uh, on the back of the tank and underneath the car is to get the filler neck back on, the evap hose, and the vent hose. Once those are back on, um, you're ready to plug everything back in and get it running. Now that everything in the tank is put back together, I drop the truck, put the tire back on, uh, put the fuse for the fuel pump back in, and uh, reconnected the negative battery cable. So now what we need to do is just turn the ignition on for uh, just a few seconds and then turn it off and let it sit for about 10 seconds. Do that a few times before trying to start the motor. If you remember, we emptied all the gas out of the lines when we dropped the tank, so now we gotta put it all back in. So do that a few times and then start the car. Camera. All right, that's it, we're done. Everything's running, uh, the engine starts right up, so we're getting fuel, and now my code already reset, my service engine soon light is off, and it shows that I have gas, so my gauge is now working. Uh, so thanks for watching, and as always, write any comments, suggestions, or recommendations in the comments below. Thanks.